As the minister's words echoed solemnly through the chapel, I stood beside my husband's casket, tears streaming down my face. Just as the final hymn began, my cousin Mark approached me with a steely glint in his eyes. Rachel, he whispered, his voice filled with urgency and a hint of malice. We need to talk about the business. We're taking over. Stunned, I stared at him, my mind racing. How could he think about seizing control at a time like this? And what hidden motivations were driving him and the rest of my cousins? The day my husband, John, died was the darkest day of my life. He had been my rock, my partner, and my best friend. His sudden death from a heart attack left a gaping hole in my world, and his funeral was supposed to be a time for us to come together and remember the man who had touched so many lives. The funeral was held at our local church, a place filled with memories of happier times. As I stood near the casket, I couldn't help but think about all the lessons John had taught me, the dreams we had shared, and the future we had planned. I felt a profound sense of loss, knowing that he was gone. It was then that Mark, my cousin, confronted me. His eyes were filled with a mix of determination and greed, and his voice shook as he demanded control of the business John and I had built together. The accusation was like a dagger to my heart, and I struggled to understand what he was talking about. Mark, I don't know what you mean, I said, my voice trembling with confusion and hurt. We haven't even had time to process John's passing. He crossed his arms, his jaws set. Rachel, the business can't wait. We've been talking, and we believe it's in everyone's best interest if we take over. You can't handle this on your own. With that, he turned and walked away, leaving me standing there, feeling helpless and confused. I knew I needed to find out the truth, not just for my sake, but for the sake of the business John and I had poured our hearts into. Determined to uncover the truth, I reached out to our family lawyer, Mr. Anderson, to discuss the business and the circumstances surrounding John's estate. He agreed to meet with Mark and me, hoping to mediate the situation and provide clarity on John's wishes. As we gathered in Mr. Anderson's office, the tension was palpable. Mark sat across from me, his expression a mix of anger and uncertainty. Mr. Anderson began by explaining the contents of John's will. Your husband made significant provisions for the business about six months ago, Mr. Anderson said, looking at us over his glasses. He left the majority of the business shares to you, Rachel. However, he also included pauses that allow for input from his partners, including your cousins. Mark's face twisted with frustration. Why does Rachel get the majority of the shares? It's not fair. Mr. Anderson adjusted his glasses, looking directly at Mark. John trusted Rachel to handle his affairs because she has always been deeply involved in the business. This doesn't mean she controls everything, Mark. The business is meant to be a collaborative effort, but Rachel has a final say. Mark's anger seemed to simmer, but it was clear that his distrust ran deep. I just don't want to be left out, Rachel. We all deserve our share. I understand, Mark, I said, my voice softening. But we need to respect John's wishes. I'm not trying to control everything. We need to work together. Determined to bridge the gap between us, I decided to dig deeper into John's belongings, hoping to find something that might help us understand his decisions better. As I searched through his study, I stumbled upon a locked drawer in his desk. After finding the key in his jewelry box, I opened the drawer to reveal a stack of letters and a journal. My hands trembled as I realized I might find answers to the questions that haunted us. I started with the letters, which were addressed to each of us from John. As I opened mine, I felt a pang of sorrow mixed with hope. Dear Rachel, if you're reading this, it means I'm no longer with you. I want you to know how proud I am of you and the person you've become. I've always trusted you to be strong and responsible, which is why I've named you the primary shareholder of the business. This decision was not made lightly, and I hope you understand that it comes from a place of love and trust. Please work together with our family to honor my wishes. I know that you can guide them and support each other through this difficult time. With all my love, John. Tears streamed down my face as I read his words. He had trusted me, and I needed to honor that trust. I decided to share these letters with Mark and the rest of our cousins, hoping it would help them understand. When I handed the letter to Mark, he hesitated before opening it. As he read John's words, I saw a mixture of emotions cross his face. Mark, John loved us all equally, I said gently. His decision to name me as the primary shareholder was based on trust, not favoritism. Let's respect his wishes and work together. Mark nodded, 
but his expression remained troubled. I guess I let my anger get the best of me. I just miss him so much, and I was afraid of losing everything. I miss him too, I replied, feeling a lump in my throat. But we can honor his memory by supporting each other and doing what's right. With a renewed sense of unity, Mark and I began to sort through John's belongings together. As we went through his study, we found old photographs, cherished mementos, and more letters that provided insight into his life and his love for us. Each discovery brought us closer, helping us to remember what truly mattered. One day, while sorting through a box of old documents, we found a sealed envelope addressed to both of us. It was dated just a few weeks before his death. Dear Rachel and Mark, I want you to know how much I love you and how proud I am of the people you've become. I've made some decisions about the business that I hope you will understand and respect. Rachel, as the one I trust most, I've named you the primary shareholder. Mark, I want you to know that my decision was made out of love and trust. Please support each other and work together to honor my memory. With all my love, John. Reading his words together, we felt a sense of closure and understanding. John had trusted us to carry on his legacy, and it was up to us to honor that trust. As we continued to go through John's belongings, we came across a hidden compartment in the back of the closet. Inside was an old, weathered journal that had belonged to him. The journal was filled with entries that spanned decades, documenting his thoughts, dreams, and fears. One entry, dated just a few months before his death, caught our attention. March 10th. I've been thinking a lot about the future and what will happen when I'm gone. Rachel and Mark are both so special to me in their own ways. I've made my decisions about the business, but I worry about how they will handle it. I hope they can find strength in each other and work together to honor my wishes. There are things I've kept hidden, secrets that could change everything. I hope they find the truth and understand that my love for them is boundless. John had mentioned secrets that could change everything. What were these secrets and why had he kept them hidden? Determined to uncover the truth, Mark and I continued to search through the hidden compartment. At the bottom, we found another sealed envelope, marked to be opened only by Rachel and Mark together. With a mixture of trepidation and curiosity, we opened the envelope and found a letter and a small key. Dear Rachel and Mark, if you are reading this, it means I am no longer with you, and it is time for you to know the truth. There are secrets I have kept to protect you, but now you must understand the full picture. Enclosed is the key to a safety deposit box at the local bank. Inside, you will find documents that will explain everything. I hope that knowing the truth will bring you closer together and help you understand my decisions. With all my love, John. Our hearts raced with anticipation and anxiety. What could be in the safety deposit box? What secrets had John kept from us? The next morning, we went to the bank, where we were escorted to a private room to access the box. Inside, we found a stack of legal documents, old letters, and photographs. As we sifted through them, a story began to unfold, one that none of us could have imagined. Years ago, before Mark and I were deeply involved in the business, John had been entangled in a complicated legal battle with a former business partner named Richard Peterson. The documents revealed that Richard had been John's closest friend and business partner, but their relationship had soured over a major disagreement. Richard had accused John of embezzlement, leading to a bitter and public legal battle. John had fought hard to clear his name, and eventually he won the case. However, the stress and strain of the ordeal left deep scars. The legal battle had nearly bankrupted him, and he had to rebuild his life and the business from scratch. The experience also led him to make careful and strategic decisions about his finances and the business, wanting to ensure that we would never face the same hardships. As we read through the letters, we discovered that Richard Peterson had never forgiven John and had continued to harbor a grudge. There were several threatening letters from Richard, vowing to ruin our family and take over the business. John had kept this from us to protect us from the fear and anxiety he had lived with for years. The most shocking revelation came from a series of letters John had written but never sent. In them, he detailed his fears that Richard would try to manipulate us or claim part of the business after his death. He urged us to stand together and be vigilant against any attempts to divide us. The weight of these revelations was overwhelming. John had carried this burden alone, shielding us from a past filled with conflict and danger. As we absorbed the full story, 
A sense of gratitude and admiration for his strength and love filled our hearts. Mark, we need to honor his legacy by standing together, I said, my voice filled with determination. We can't let the past tear us apart. We have to support each other and protect what he worked so hard to build. Mark nodded, his eyes filled with regret and resolve. I let my anger and fear get the best of me. I'm sorry, Rachel. I understand now why he trusted you to lead us. With a renewed sense of purpose, we worked together to settle John's estate and ensure that his wishes were honored. The knowledge of his struggles and the threats he had faced brought us closer, strengthening our bond as a family. We decided to create a family trust in his memory, dedicated to supporting causes he cared about and helping families in need. It was our way of turning his pain into something positive, ensuring that his legacy of love and resilience would live on. As we went through his belongings one last time, we found a final letter addressed to both of us. It was dated just days before his death. Dear Rachel and Mark, as I prepare for a trip that I hope will bring me some peace, I want you to know how much I love you. Life is unpredictable, and I want you to be prepared for anything. The truth I've hidden from you was meant to protect you, but I believe you are strong enough now to handle it. Remember that my love for you is endless, and I trust you to make the right decisions. Stay united, support each other, and carry on my legacy with pride and strength. With all my love, John. Reading his final words, we felt a profound sense of closure and peace. John's love had guided him through unimaginable challenges, and now it was our turn to carry that love forward. Years passed, and the pain of losing John gradually transformed into cherished memories of the love and life he had given us. The family trust we created in his honor flourished, helping countless families overcome hardships and achieve their dreams. Our bond as a family grew stronger, fortified by the knowledge of John's struggles and sacrifices. We supported each other through life's challenges and celebrated each other's successes, always remembering the lessons of resilience and unity John had taught us. One sunny afternoon, as we gathered in the garden of our family home, I felt a sense of fulfillment. The flowers John had planted were in full bloom, a vibrant reminder of the love and care he had poured into every aspect of his life. As we sat together, reflecting on the journey we had been through, Mark turned to me with a smile. Rachel, thank you for being our rock. John was right to trust you. I smiled, feeling a warmth in my heart. We did it together, Mark. He would be proud of all of us. In that moment, I knew that John's legacy would live on, not just in the wealth and possessions he had left behind, but in the values, love, and wisdom he had instilled in us. His spirit would always be a guiding light, reminding us of the importance of family, unity, and the enduring power of love. The story of Rachel and Mark is a testament to the strength of family bonds and the power of love and resilience. Despite the challenges and the pain of losing John, they navigated the complexities of their inheritance and uncovered a hidden past that brought them closer together. The mystery of John's hidden struggles and the threats he faced added depth to their journey, revealing the true character of their beloved John and highlighting the importance of trust and unity in overcoming adversity. Rachel and Mark learned that John's legacy was not just about material wealth, but about the values and love that he had instilled in them. Through perseverance, courage, and a commitment to honor his memory, they ensured that John's spirit would continue to guide and inspire them for years to come.